Hello, beautiful souls. How are you doing? It has been up and down, up and down, up and down with the energies, right? So much is happening. I don't want to hear you say nothing's happening because it truly is. And today's video, it it's something that happens all the time. Okay. I want to be very clear. Like the scenario that I'm going to give you today, it's not original. <laughs> And unfortunately, uh, as the world navigates the ascension, there are triggers, triggers that occur in people, triggers that occur in governments, triggers that occur in the establishment, triggers that occur in people that got very accustomed to doing everything the government said to do, and now they really feel completely taken advantage of. So they should feel triggered because they have work to do. So I do my very best to not engage with most mainstream anything, to be honest. Um. I I stick to entertainment of sci-fi movies, documentaries, and uh, reading. So it's it's part of my mission, though, to sense energetic shifts and changes um, around our planet, around our galaxy, around our universe. And so I cannot fully and completely turn away from everything. So I definitely use my discernment, use my protection, shielding, grounding, all the things. And I do try to balance when I see um, any aspect of social media, like going off the rails, like everyone's grabbing their pitchforks and swords and shields and uh heading for the next battle and I, I do try to interject love forgiveness gratitude where my intention is to kind of snap the the um the driving energy of vindictiveness justice um retribution and to hopefully connect on a level that enables beings to go, you know, what has war gotten us but more war? What has disagreements and divergence gotten but a wider swath of beings that don't feel supported, don't feel connected, um, completely they feel like they're all alone. And we've learned, I've learned, that love is the strongest power. Love is the strongest frequency. And love has the ability to change in ways that brute force do not. And so I know very well that I have absolutely no control over how my messages are received and how that energy is received, <clears throat> but I do send it with a clear intent to make a positive difference. Um, hopefully an aha moment for maybe someone. And honestly, if the message receives one person and it changes that trajectory from a lower frequency timeline, a negative polarity timeline, a service to self timeline, and elevates them in a way that they choose a higher timeline, a higher consciousness action, then it's worth it. I never, um, I never considered doing my mission to the fullest extent and coming out unscathed. I have pretty thick skin. But I'm going to give you a true story today, and I'm going to give you some really valuable lessons that we learned the hard way. And you too will probably 
not fully understand until you start to earn, learn the hard way. But in doing so, I, I would love for you to have these little pearls of wisdom if you choose to keep them and use them, because I do think it can be beneficial for you in a, in a major way. So this interaction um, occurred in a Telegram chat room that I participate in, and you may as well. And the name of the chat room is WH Grandpa. And I do see a lot of um, lost souls, and I see a lot of you know, the ones that, when is something going to happen? When are they going to be held accountable? Um, I don't see anything. Stop, you know, all the rhetoric, like all those things. And then you have the other, the other dynamic, which are just very, very vindictive. I, I don't have another word for them. The vitriol is palpable. And they usually back up their vehemoth with Bible verses. And so the message has been coming about for a long time. And it came through kind of like a thunderbolt a couple of days ago. And um, I had to jot some things down because it was it was pulled from events that have occurred over months. Like I said, this is this isn't one just one instance. This happens quite frequently. But I'm going to give you this true story. So I'm in this chat room, and there's a discussion about orphan trains one day, and I posted that I had covered the orphan trains. If anyone was interested, they could look up my um, healing disclosures on YouTube and Rumble and check it out. And so I also noted, you know, that it had to do with um, incubator babies and the truth of the Freemasons. I did a video about that and I did a video about DC and I thought that um, that telegram group of people may be interested in that kind of stuff because it's some of the things that they talk about quite frequently frequently and just to give them another window of information that they could digest in their own way so a few minutes later I received a message from a female I think um very um religious and indoctrinated and um she wanted to know if she could ask me a question which I totally was open to absolutely no problem So this was the question that followed. Does it not bother you this lady obtained information using necromancy? So I replied, hello, I am this lady. And I communicated with many beings of a higher consciousness, some who've transitioned. I am humbled and honored to do so. No reply. So I continued. Tell me, do you not speak or pray to communicate with Jesus or God? She says, yes, of course, I pray to our Heavenly Father. Jesus died on the cross for our salvation. Me. All caps. Lies. Stop delivering your indoctrination and brainwashing to me. I get my communication guidance messages from source creator, AKA God of all things directly. His energy is huge, loving, compassionate from mother Sophia creatrix of all life. Her energy is huge, nurturing, fierce, loyal, and loving. The relationships I have, you too can have without jumping through man-made religious hoops 
and indoctrination. We have a birthright to communicate with Source Creator, Mother Sophia, our guardian angels, our guides. They transition family members that really volunteer to be guides for us. It is a privilege to communicate to them, to recognize them, to know them by name. And our soul family. Soul families are connected by the energy essence, the soul being. It can be anywhere in any dimension, any plane of existence. They're still family. I said, it is such hypocrisy to gather a flock of sheep and encourage them to pray together to God while condemning those who actually communicate with said God, but in reality, the divine. That's the end of that message thread. But it is symbolic of the closed-mindedness of those who proclaim to seek a relationship with God and then have no problem spewing hate, judgment, shame, blame, guilt, just like the church over those who have a relationship with said God. Hypocrisy. The actual definition in living form is religion, in my opinion. I absolutely am very aware that this is going to trigger you, and it should. Because I really, truly want you to understand that the relationship that you seek is for you to cultivate. And it is not for any other man, woman, child, book, building, church, congregation, religion, country, government, anything to say that you cannot have this relationship because you don't abide by their man-made doctrine. That is not the way. That is the man-made way. That is the way that they altered things and edited things to keep you pigeonholed and to keep you believing that it is not cop capable. It is not possible for you to have this relationship without it being out of bounds, without, without it fearing the devil, without it being satanic. Like, why? Where did we go? Where, how did we get there? You walked in the church seeking a relationship with a higher power, aka God, and yet the possibility of someone actually having that relationship freaks you the fuck out and you start to attack them. Look at what you are doing. Listen to what comes out of your mouth. Is that loving? Is that kind? Is that compassion? Do you sit and pray and pray and pray and pray these preordained, pre-approved prayers, which are spellcasting in Luciferian language of Latin, and wonder why you never hear back? Wonder why it's a one-way conversation and that's all that's ever allowed. The only person that ever gets a message is the guy at the podium. That makes no sense. Wake up. If you would allow yourself to entertain the idea that the relationship goes both ways and when you truly convince yourself it's okay to receive the messages, the messages are there. No matter how hypocritical you are, your guardian angel is still with you. The divine still watches over you, hoping and praying that you find your way. But what your brain allows you to do and what your soul, energy, essence, energy body wants you to do are not usually in alignment. Very rarely is there an alignment there because the egoic brain does not want to give up power, just like the church. In 2022, when I cleared my own energy body of thousands of negative energy distortions, I went from feeling completely blocked and capped off 
to being fully open and my chakra tube open, my energy tube open, I was able to connect to Mother Earth and connect to Source Creator directly, directly. I knew that I had been asking for the guidance to find that divine path, that path that I was supposed to be on, the purpose, the mission, whatever you want to say. I was meant to be there. And if I was not where I was meant to be, I wanted to be redirected. Course correct me. It was my prayer. Like put me where I am most needed to serve the purpose I was put here for. I always wanted to be in service to the greater good. I wanted to be a part of the solution, not a part of the problems. This came to me loud and clear. Big, loving, loud and clear. That in order for me to fully and completely embody my divine mission, I had to do the shadow work to get over the things that I had also been indoctrinated with as I was growing up in the Catholic Church. I realized that there would always be support for me and guidance for me. As I took that place of this is me in the now moment, doing my absolute very best to honor the messages, the guidance, um, the, the path that has been lit for me, even though it feels very uncomfortable, even though it's something that I have never done before, it's something that I've never even considered doing before, but this is my guidance. This is my calling. And my soul responded to that very, very uh, strongly in a way that I knew this was for me. This was my path. It never occurred to me. It never crossed my mind that this was something I should be in judgment of. You see, because judgment is low vibration and not in alignment to source creator. He, he does not judge you. There's not a judgment there. There are consequences to your actions that is completely different than judgment. <clears throat> When we say the now moment, it's because we fully have come to understand that the past is history and cannot be changed. And the future is not yet written. It is our decisions in the now moment that dictate the timeline that we actually jump onto for that future path. If you want things to be different, you're going to have to do different things. That's the way it works. If you want things to stay the exact same, keep doing what you're doing. That's the way that that works. If you want change, but you're not willing to change, will you have to do some work there because you can't have it both ways. You can't stay completely encapsulated in your bubble, all completely comfortable, not changing anything about your life, but you want everybody to change around you so that your life becomes better. That's also not how it works. When my mission was really given to me in a very clear, but loving and nurturing way, I had some panic. I had some like, how am I going to support myself? How am I like, this is my career. This is all I've ever known. How, how do I live by not doing this? Like I've never even been in interested in what you want me to do now. And I had to, I, I quickly caught myself and realized that for decades I had been asking to be put on my path. And now the path is there in front of me, waiting for me to have the courage and faith to take that step. And, and it really wasn't any longer a possibility for me to say, no, now is not a good time. If not now, when, right? If not now, when, how many have prayers, 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 prayers. And you say, gosh, I just want my prayer answered. I just want acknowledgement. My prayer has been received. This is, this is real, real talk. If you even think something, it's known. You don't even have to verbalize it, nor does it need to be in some pre-approved format from the church. If you just think it and literally attach an emotion to it, it's known. It's known. So my deepest desires were known and were acted upon. And I was given the, okay, now is your moment. 
And after that moment, I realized that this is time. This is time for me to act on my faith. I say I have and have enough courage to take the step. It's a little bit of courage and a whole lot of faith the entire way, one day at a time. My faith, my soul, my heart knew my truth and my messages will resonate with those it is meant to find. And those that find my messages and all they can come up with are judgment, shame, blame, guilt, projections of their own fear and doubt. Well, they too may get a mustard seed that develops and grows over time. So nothing is lost. I've had a lot of evil intentioned beings attack me and a lot that I've had to defend myself from negative energy attacks, psychic attacks, curses, hexes, and spells, um, all sorts of stuff. And I came here to tell you that almost 100% was sent by dark humans, not by me interacting with benevolent beings from across the veil, because I have a benevolent ascendant master gatekeeper, Kuan Yin, makes sure that there are no malevolent energetic beings that approach me. I have that level of shielding and I take precautions to make sure that I stay clear. The humans, the dark humans, the ones that are full of vitriol, they also have connections to the darkness. And they send negative energy attacks all the time. Uh, pretty much daily. But I have lots of shielding, lots of protection. And I'm pro mostly unaffected by it. I'm aware. And I'm still unaffected by it. So let that sink in. When, when you want to um, pass judgment on me or anyone who is having co channeled communication, receiving downloaded messages through clairaudient, claircognizant, clairvoyance, clairsentience, clairfactience, like these are true energetic communications that we're just brave enough to say we've had them. So it's literally what you say you want most when you go to said church or when you say your pre-approved prayers. And yet those that actually have communication with source creator and mother Sophia, the archangels, you shame, blame, project your negative information, indoctrination, fears, lack of doing your own shadow work and send out negative energy. That's how you respond to those of us who are communicating openly with the divine. So if what I believe in and share as truth is not, why would you work so hard to quiet me? Those with nothing to hide, hide nothing. Probably heard that a time or two. I have seen it demonstrated. I live it. Same reason why Constantine and the Council of Nicaea sent out crusades of soldiers to destroy, discover, unearth all the scrolls and tablets and recordings of those that had walked with Yeshua and had been participating in the Gnostic gatherings, teachings, the Essenes, the Isis mystery schools, all of that had to be destroyed, you see, because it literally teaches you how to be a sovereign energy being in communion with the divine, with your guides, with your guardian angels as one. It's called unity consciousness. Church couldn't have that. They needed you to fall in line and come in like a herd of sheep to their building where they condemned you and said you would never be good enough. 
So you felt disempowered and you felt weak and you kept leaning on them because they were the only one getting the messages. It's lies. I'm not saying they don't get messages. I'm just here to tell you, you can get it direct from source creator. You do not need a middleman. You do not need an interpreter. Whatever language you speak, it is spoken. There's a lot of energy around me right now because Yeshua loves it when I start to flip tables and speak the truth. And Maggie and Yeshua and so many, Isis and Osiris, they have been besmirched. Their character, their teachings, what they truly lived for has been hidden all to prop up propaganda. And it ends. It ends as soon as you go, you know what? That makes no fucking sense. I am worthy of a conversation. I am worthy of a relationship with the divine. And I don't need your permission. I don't need to say this prayer and that prayer and this and this holy rosary and all of this stuff. That's okay. I'm not doing it because it's not necessary. I don't have to jump through those hoops in order to be good enough to have a relationship with father, mother, God, AKA source creator and mother Sophia creatrix of all life. When Yeshua and Maggie and their followers traveled around in their time on this planet as humans, <clears throat> they met with new villages and new people and they would commune in a circle they would sit cross-legged in a big circle and just talk and truly listen and feel and those that resonated with their message had life-changing aha moments that they spoke about Many of them also received healing by way of clearing their energy bodies, being around them. Everything was cleared, a clearing was done, and they could connect. It's no different than what I am able to do as a quantum energy transformation healer. It's what Mother Sophia gave me in place of nursing so that all of my experience, all of my energy, all of my good intentions can actually be working for the greater good instead of being part of a problem. You see how nothing you do is wasted in this life when you are properly intentioned, when you are good intentioned in service to others. It is all for you and for the greater good. That is what we are here to do. Now, there are beings that walk around us that have a mission of negative polarity. That is what their soul contract is. They are balancing out their karma. Leave them alone. You cannot save everyone. The best thing you can do to help your brothers and sisters around you is to truly help yourself, to truly dig deep and do the shadow work that allows you to understand what true freedom and sovereignty is. You understand that the relationships that you can develop on a very personal level are so much bigger and better than anything that's been printed in a book. That gives you limits to a relationship, boundaries where you can only accept or, or share so much. And that's limited to say the least. Christ consciousness and unity, unity consciousness is the exact opposite of religion. And it needs to be clarified. It needs to be said. Can you be religious and also act, believe, embody Christ consciousness? Yes, but not for long. Because as soon as you truly start to embody unity consciousness and Christ consciousness, which is loving, compassionate, kindness, empathy, forgiveness, and gratitude for all living things, beings, animals, trees, flowers, insects, your neighbor, 
dogs, cats, birds, the water, everything, you quickly see the divergence from that and what you hear on Sundays or whatever day you go to your congregation because religion is man-made. Religion was created, created for control, for power, and for position to leverage human beings against one another so that a few at the top could benefit. And the masses would suffer greatly for thousands and thousands of years. The messages that I receive on a daily basis come from Source Creator, Mother Sophia, Grand, which is White Buffalo Calf Woman, Mama, Father Yogananda, Archangel Metatron, who is my poppy, and... um. A few from Inner Earth and a few from Space Force or the Pleiadian High Council. And those are all mission related and also divine guidance. And I know them by their energy. I know them when they reach out to me by their energy. Energy doesn't lie. People lie. But when you are really connected and cleared... You can detect a good intentioned being from across the room without ever saying a word. Them also without ever saying a word. Meanwhile, someone who's very loud and very, very convinced that they are good intentioned, their negative energy can be felt as well. But this is the thing. One enlightened soul one that has a frequency over 750 that is embodying christ consciousness and no one is perfect but truly trying to discern each decision that they make throughout the day of the higher timeline being led through your heart chakra your heart space and seeing things from that perspective where you can you can navigate using love, forgiveness, and gratitude as your guidance, then those beings attract one another. And those beings that are super bright and super light in their density, because they are ascending, can offset the negative energy of a thousand other beings. That's why you can walk through a grocery store and all of a sudden it feels a lot lighter because of your presence, because the light has come in and the density has risen. It's less dense. Some, some have missions to just share their energy with others in a positive way to just go be in, in nature or go be in public spaces and share your positive energy. Give people a po a big dose of, of loving Christ consciousness frequency. That's a huge mission. And it's very effective. So when you hear go within, that's where your truth and guidance is. Most people that have grown up indoctrinated have no fucking clue what that means. Because they have been guided against that. They have been taught that everything they need comes from outside of themselves. From the congregation. From the pulpit. And that's not true. That is a lie. Your truth resides within you. We are 90 something percent water. Water has memory. Water has the blueprint of our essence. Our DNA has the memories, the blueprint of our essence. Those or within you. They are not outside of you. The truth of who and what you are and why you're here has been within you the entire time. You just need permission to know it's okay to go freaking find it. Discover who you truly are. What matters to you? What makes you happy? What makes your soul sing? When you go, oh, this is it. This is the sauce. 
this is it. This is what makes it all worthwhile. Have you found that yet? It is very freeing to do so. If you're walking in someone else's shadow, how will you find your light? You go within. The people that rely heavily on the Bible, they see so much of what we see as daily blessings. They see it as impossible and satanic and evil because that's what they've been told. If you're told beat over the head literally with the book that all of this is bad because it would actually free you do you see why they would do it yeah it's not for your greater good it's not because they're looking out for you it's not because they're trying to protect you it's because they're trying to keep you ignorant to your own truth and your own power and your own abilities and why you volunteered to be in this dimension at this time in this now moment. Every single day you have another opportunity to course correct back to source creator and choose the higher timeline, the timelines of unity consciousness and Christ consciousness. I ask why the flock is so controllable, manipulated. The flock is lost because they're not truly guided they don't have an inner gnosis communication. They don't, they're not connected to their inner compass. They're, they're being led by their egoic brain. When I communicate, I have a very no-nonsense approach to my communications with source creator. Something comes up and I just simply say source, blah, blah, blah. And I get an answer. Mother Sophia blah, blah, blah. And I get an answer. And sometimes my answers are silence because I can't know. And actually that is an answer, right? I give gratitude for that and move on my merry way. When the Ascendant Masters, Yeshua, Maggie, Ascendant Master Mary, she prefers that over Mother Mary because she's been many things, Kuan Yin, Buddha, aka Father Yogananda, Sanat Kamara, Saint Germain, another grandfather, White Buffalo Calf Woman, Archangel Michael and Archangel Metatron, um, Archangel Raphael's with me all the time, with me right now. They are neutral. They are loving. They are non-judgmental. They are nurturing, they are forgiving, but they are real. So if I'm screwing up, I hear about it. No punches are pulled, just straight up. If I'm on my, my path and I am speaking my truth and it is triggering whoever watches it, listens to it, digests it in whatever way. But it is the truth that needs to be spoken. I am showered with love because they understand it's not easy. And they also understand the attacks that I will receive by those indoctrinated fools. I accept it. I understand. Giving you a, a mustard seed of truth is more important than perpetuating some lie. I'm not about that life. I asked a long time ago for my, my mission and my purpose to be revealed. And it was in a big way. And I raised my hand again and said, yes, I fully commit in this now moment to jump onto this path and ride this wave of ascension, the highs and the lows and the everything in between. And there've been many of both. My trust comes from my faith. My faith comes from my ability to be open to change. And I rely on my ability to detect good energy from bad energy and go from there. And I don't work alone. 
there is all sorts of things that can happen when an energy body is not experienced enough to understand all the different things that can come in and they don't have anyone to watch their back to help them make sure they're clear, make sure that they're not being attacked, make sure that they're clear after an attack, all sorts of things. So we have all that in place. I am not an idiot. I'm very methodical in my practice. I don't take any chances and I stay very, very neutral. The ego that used to be a part of me is dead, died a long time ago. I can be passionate about things without having the ego. And I love it because it's truth that drives that passion. And it is recognizing it and also sharing it and acting upon it that drives that passion. And that that true feeling, the true essence attached to that event is how things manifest. The The universe brings you what you desire. It doesn't matter what you say. It's the energy attached to, to the desire. It's the energy attached to the fear. It's the energy attached to the doubt. If you are full of doubts, but you make sure that you say all the right things, the universe is going to continue to bring you doubt so that you can find your way to truth and fact. That's the way it works. That's the law of attraction. What occupies your mind is what will occupy your energy and vice versa. Love, forgiveness, and gratitude truly does set us free and set us apart from that indoctrinated life where it is so quick to, to rush to judgment. You do not truly understand what another being is going through. And the best way to handle that is to shower them with love. Most people in this dimension, in this time, have not had easy lives. And they've had a lot of hardship. They've had a lot of judgment. They've had a lot of persecution. What they have not had is love. True, unmanipulated love. So if you're wondering what you can do to help change things, you can love you can send love out. You can forgive truly and completely all parties involved and forget. Don't play that I'll forgive you, but I won't forget bullshit because you're just staying chained to something that deserves forgiveness. It is my hope that you see the light very quickly. The the timeline for the planet and for the people on the planet to ascend is rapidly moving ahead. The timeline has been collapsed down 50%, 50%, 50%, 75%. Depends on how I feel like it. Yes, I do that. I've been asked to stop because we're pretty much there. But I've done that almost all of last year. Things weren't happening fast enough. I sped them up. Trust that you have the faith and that that faith is real. Trust that when you feel like something is misguiding you or something doesn't sound right, that there's value in that and dig in and figure out why. Trust that you can wake up at any moment in time and put the indoctrination aside and set yourself free to allow what the universe has been waiting to give you, but you have not been in a receptive mode for your entire existence. When you are authentic in your integrity and you speak your sovereign truth, the energy being, the divine being, the divine soul, the spark of light and life that you have for a greater purpose that is when you level up on a soul. That is whenever you earn your street cred, so to speak. We do not need a kingdom of people afraid to speak truth. We do not need a kingdom of people who only follow one or two other beings. We do not need that. That is not going to lead us to the golden age of miracles and unity consciousness. Unity consciousness is accountability for your own actions, your own energy, and your own spirituality. If you don't have it, it's because you chose not to. 
And choosing to have it is just that easy. Get out of your own way. No one saves you because you have to do the work to save yourself. You have to go through your shadows. You have to deal with them. You have to clear them out, clear out the boxes of the closet, clear out all the, the dark hallways that you didn't want to go down. And how do you do that? Love, forgiveness, and gratitude. It works. I may sound like a broken record, but it needs to be heard. Love is the key. Forgiveness in all forms is the sauce. It empowers that love and gratitude for the lesson, gratitude for the experience, gratitude for the opportunity. There's always something to be grateful for. Many who lean on that book and think that that's all that there is, they truly are robbing themselves of what I like to think is a much better way to have a relationship with your team. What do I mean by team? Your guardian angel, your archangels, your spirit guides. That is usually a family member or a close friend that has transitioned, but volunteered to stay connected to you energetically to help guide you if you are accepting and willing to do so. There is nothing evil about that. Nothing. In fact, you are escaping the limitations of your human mind and you are actually accepting the wisdom of the divine, the wisdom of your higher self, the wisdom of the ascendant masters who have been there, done that, got the t-shirt, and now they are able to, because they transcended their own dimension, assist others in a major way. So you're going to snub them for Charlie on the pulpit? Give me a break. Give me a break. There's a whole lot that can be obtained when you open yourself up to receive what the universe has for you. It may not be all rainbows and butterflies because you got to do your shadow work, but it's getting through that that opens up to the beautiful waterfall of truth, the cleansing water of divine source, the healing waters that bring you back to wholeness. That is the goal. Source creator, Mother Sophia, Yeshua, Maggie, none of them recognize religious limitations. They see it as a hurdle you've allowed to be put in your path between you and them. And it's up to you to move that hurdle out of the way. Because it's man-made. It's not coming from them. It's been put in the path. Yeshua has said it many times. We are our own hurdles. As soon as we get out of our own way, beautiful things happen. The law of one is universal law, plain and simple. It's followed. It is honored in all galaxies and all universes. And it is honored in our lifetime right now, whether you are aware of it or not. It has much more implication in your life and in your lives uh, in totality than any laws on the books in our current state country realm one equals unity unity equals christ unity consciousness oneness christ consciousness all the same original teachings that were destroyed or they tried to you can't destroy what's inside, right? They can try and they've done a really good job of blocking people from realizing that their truth has been inside them their whole life, but it is there. Dig deep. It's inside. The voice that you keep hearing, it's not yourself. It's not you. It's your higher self or it's a guide or it's source. The voice I was ignoring for a long time that said start a YouTube channel was source creator. And I was like, I don't know who this message is for, but it is not for me. I said that for a long time. And it get like, louder and louder and frequent until I realized it was for me. And then I realized who I had been dissing <laughs> and the source totally forgave me. 
So you see now that unity and Christ consciousness, which is, by the way, the second coming of Christ, is actually the opposite of what your congregation talks about and actually demonstrates. They demonstrate judgment. They demonstrate fear. They demonstrate shame and guilt and blame and disempowerment and unworthy. They are the opposite of oneness. They are the opposite of Christ consciousness. They are the opposite of unity consciousness, and they are the opposite of ascending. Period. When beings think, sleep, eat, breathe, judgment, low vibrational things, shame, blame, guilt, that is their choice, and they are choosing lower timelines, they will not ascend. Their choice is to not ascend. Some beings choose not to participate in ascension. That's their role. Mind your business. But there are others like yourself. If you're watching me, it's for a reason. You know that there's something bigger for you to do. You feel it deep inside. You're meant for a bigger purpose. You're meant for a better purpose. What is it? What is it? Tell me what it is. Tell me what it is. You want to know what it is? It's inside you. Do your shadow work and you will find it. It's been there all along. So when people make their free will choices to stay indoctrinated because they think that's the only way to get to quote unquote heaven, they're completely misguided. Heaven and hell are just different dimensions. So the higher dimensions are heaven like. And the lower dimensions are hellish because they are low frequency, low vibration. And the higher dimensions are higher frequency, higher vibration. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. So when we understand who we're dealing with, when you understand who your, who, what your soul contract is and that you married a karmic partner and he was supposed to end a long time ago, but you've been guilted into staying because the church says you got to stay with this person who does not serve you your highest and best good anymore. You have to do the work. You have to do, you have to make the decisions to free yourself from the karma so that you can align to the divine. If you continue to sacrifice your own sovereignty for others, that is your choice. That is your free will choice. You can do that. It will not lead you to the highest timeline for you. When you understand that your family is full of witches or NPCs or organic portals, then you understand what you have to do to deal with them. And then it is up to you to follow through with it and deal with them. No one's going to do it for you. You're only in control of yourself. Enforcing a healthy boundary means that you don't fall for the bullshit and you don't buy into their judgments and projections that they throw on you and you stay centered and grounded and you choose to not engage with that energy because they're going to be whatever they, it is that they need to be or choose to be. You choose to engage with that or not. And when you choose yourself, you're going to level up. Source creator, Mother Sophia is going to be giving you a golf clap. Because you're finally choosing yourself over these karmic beings that are no longer in your highest and best good because you've already learned the lesson 18 times, but you haven't separated yourself from them because it's comfortable. Because even an abuser and an abused person understand what to expect from each other. And there's comfort in that, even though it's pain, even though it's torture. The fear of the unknown keeps them paralyzed and staying in this negative loop of pain, fear, blame, shame, guilt. You have the choice to step off that negative, that negative loop. You, you do. It's literally a choice. Get out of it. Do things differently. If you want to see things that ch change, then you need to change. If you want to see things be more loving, kind, and compassionate, I invite you to be more loving, kind, and compassionate. If you want to see this entire world change, change yourself for the better. It ripples out throughout the world. 
I guarantee it. I've seen it. I felt it. If you want to know more about this topic, I invite you to pick up Sold or Soulless on Amazon. The link is in the description. Truth Resonate podcast drops every Friday morning at 6 a.m. That is a lot of disclosure, a lot of mission disclosure. And I invite you to truly get real with yourself and don't participate in the low vibrational, very common judgment that comes from those who tend to align more with the book and the building and the man than source creator, Mother Sophia and the divine. Thank you for joining me today and I'll see you again next time on Healing Disclosures.